How's it going guys? Peep is awesome here. Yeah, yeah, no clever intro here. I'm, I'm just flipping awesome, man. And you guys hit sub goals very quickly. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'll be right back. How's it going, guys? Peep is running out of unique hoodies to wear here. Check it out, Lunchables. I kind of regret not getting the one that comes with a free Capri Sun. Uh, I'll improvise. Hold up, hold up. Right, so, here's our complimentary Hawaiian punch. I'm just gonna leave that right there. That's gonna be my beverage. All right, can I get the camera lower down somehow? All right, here you go. All right. Today, we're making some uh, Lunchables. Oh, this is good because I can actually eat without you guys seeing my face. This, this setup actually works perfectly. Whoever's cutting this cheese needs to be fired, bro. This shit's like impossible to peel. Like, look at this, bro. It's like, did they even cut this or did they just give me a block of cheese? All right, then we got the, the turkey, which is probably not real, but it's fine. You know what? That's, that's like oddly relaxing to eat. I should probably buy these more often. Like something about this is just really relaxing. All right, time for the complimentary beverage. It's a uh, one gallon of Hawaiian punch. All right, this is like a two-hander, so uh, one second. Ah, refreshing. Oh shit, I almost spilled it. If this channel gets 27,000 subscribers by the end of this week, honestly, you guys decide. Most liked comment is what I eat next in my next video, all right? As long as I can legally consume it, then I don't care. P pick what I'm eating next video. 27,000 subscribers, see y'all there. Anyways, back to the video. On today's video, we're talking about Mark Ass Brownie, which if we're being honest with you, he's a creator that doesn't really get himself into many controversies or drama. He's just a tech reviewer. Like what, what drama is there? Oh, well, apparently there is drama. So here's basically what happened. Now this could be a little biased, but I, like watching Marcus Brownie. The main reason I like watching Marcus Brownie is because like it's not brain rot It's just this relaxing video of just him reviewing tech and what makes him stand out from other tech reviewers Is that it's not sponsored? He literally just does his own thing and what are the consequences of not being sponsored by the tech he's reviewing? It's that he's going to be blunt and I feel like that's something a lot of people appreciate He's not a walking advertisement. He's just like oh you know, I personally recommend this piece of technology. But at the same time, he could also go, yeah, I'm sorry, I cannot recommend this. This is garbage. Which is exactly what a lot of people are talking about. So here's what happened. A couple days ago, Marcus Brownie released this video right here. The worst product I've ever reviewed for now. And basically in this video, he talks about this product right here. It's called the Humane AI Pin. And basically what it is, it's a reworked phone. It's supposed to be like an alternative to a phone, which... In my opinion, I really like this idea. I've genuinely considered, I'm not even joking, I've genuinely considered getting a flip phone once my current phone breaks. I have an iPhone XR right now. It is probably going to die like any day now, if I'm being honest. And I'm just like, ooh, you know, I could get a new iPhone, but I could also get something that won't be a distraction for me. I don't want to be spending two to three hours a day on my phone just scrolling on YouTube. Like, I just want a phone that does the bare minimum. So when I heard about the Humane AI pin, I was genuinely like, okay, hold up. This is actually interesting. I kind of want to see how this works. But unfortunately, there was a lot of downsides to this. Let's check it out real quick. Right, so this is the Humane AI pin. It is a brand new product and a really, really interesting form factor of an ultra futuristic wearable computer. Unfortunately, it's also the new worst product I think I've ever reviewed it's in its current state. There's just so many things bad about it. It's so bad, in fact, that I think it's actually kind of distracting to like understand what the point of the device is as we go through it. So I'm gonna have to separate it out for this video. First, I'm gonna tell you what it is and what it's supposed to do. And then I'll tell you what my experience has actually been using it. So yeah, right off the bat, you can already tell this is not looking good. It costs $700 plus a $24 a month subscription plan for the data that comes with it and all the services and all the online storage. But yeah, $700 plus a subscription. 
Yeah, you can tell right off the bat, like, I feel like everyone already lost interest here. See, looking at this pin, you expect it to be like $200, right? It does not look like it's worth that much. Maybe, maybe $300 at most. But $700 plus a subscription plan. In case people don't complain about everything being a subscription service enough, maybe all the complaints about this would slide if it was worth not $700 plus a subscription service. So yeah, if you want to go watch this video, go ahead. It's really interesting. I like Marquez Brownie. But this video specifically sparked a huge debate when it comes to the current state of tech reviewers. Because people on Twitter recently discovered that with Marquez Brownie having such a huge following, he can easily make or break the entire tech industry. Like after this video released, which by the way, three days ago, already has almost 6 million views. I think this one video is enough to make almost 6 million people lose interest in this product. He can easily make or break an entire company and make it go bankrupt just by releasing a single video, which realistically, you can see the consequences. However, it's not his fault and it's not our fault that Humane just released a horrible tech product that is not practical, overpriced, and overall there really is no point in getting it so twitter being twitter they had something to say about it because i <laughs> i've said this before i'm gonna say it again twitter is just one long argument that will never end like there's actually no point in using twitter unless you're like trolling or you're genuinely butthurt about literally everything that has ever happened so we're gonna go on mark ass brownies twitter real quick i gotta stop saying that and here he plugged his newest video about him talking about the human ai pin obviously this is 99 percent of my experiences with the pin doing something you could already do on your phone but slower more annoying or less reliable slash accurate turns out smartphones are actually pretty incredible so yeah like i said earlier this is sort of the demographic of the pin which honestly i'm part of i'll admit but there are occasional small glimpses of a future where this product could actually peel you away from your phone reduce your screen time and help you live more in the moment and that i can't be mad at so there's potential in this and I'm gonna have to agree with Marcus Brownie on this. There's potential in this. It's just, unfortunately, it's at a point where it's borderline useless and there's no point in you having it. If they ever rework this, if they ever remake this, make a 2.0 of this pin, I'm literally gonna be the first one to check it out. And oh my God, we got a bunch of chronically online Twitter users. <laughs> Whoa, you're verified? No way, cause you're like a huge person, right? Yo, how'd you get verified at 700 followers, bro? That's crazy. Who pays for Twitter, bro? No offense. If you pay for Twitter, it's just a huge red flag, right? To the 9% of my viewers that are female, he's a 10, but he pays for Twitter, bro. What's your answer? He's a 10, but he's chronically on Twitter and has the fake verification mark and obviously there have been some pretty reasonable comments like this one meh it's a first gen ai product with the slope of ai improvement it could be faster than your phone in one to three years comparing a 13th or 14th generation product that had billions of dollars in development to a new product from a startup seems a little unfair this is a reasonable argument i'm gonna have to agree with eugene but then there's people like this i find it distasteful almost unethical to say this when you have 18 million subscribers hard to explain why but with great reach comes with great responsibility potentially killing someone else's nascent project reeks of carelessness first do no harm you know i i can't stress this enough if you don't want bad reviews don't create a bad product like i don't know what to say here and marcus brownie said it himself while it's not good now there is potential for it in the future it's just that unfortunately this is a first generation product so it's going to suck so ever since daniel vasallo said this there's just been an ongoing argument with him because you know twitter users being twitter users <laughs> never ends bro if one argument ends on twitter two more just spawn out of nowhere it was so bad to the point where marcus brownie actually had to release a video about this do bad reviews kill companies L let's actually take a second to watch this video real quick let's watch the opinion of someone who can single-handedly make or break an entire company with one video let's see what he has to say about this i review a lot of products right i've i've talked about hundreds, maybe thousands of products at this point. So there's been a lot of interesting discourse lately on this topic. There will be, you know, some negative reviews and then a company will eventually go out of business and then the internet poses the question, do bad reviews kill companies? Do bad reviews kill companies or do bad products companies i think overall marcus makes a lot of good points here like he hated the razor phone and yet razor is still like one of the biggest tech companies in the world so let me i'll just give an example i've told this story before but 
years ago, I remember I reviewed the first uh, Razer phone when it came out. So Razer gaming company, they make lots of stuff. They're getting into smartphones for the first time. So they made a phone that appeals to the same target demographic of gamers. So you know, it had a bunch of upsides and downsides, obviously gaming focused features. So it's got like front facing speakers and a high refresh rate. The battery is pretty big, but also the camera was weak. And I specifically, I remember I, the vibration motor was horrible. And I remember calling it out. I remember saying this. Also the vibration motor in this phone, trash, straight trash. I'm gonna call myself so you can hear this. Like, people are still talking about Razer to this day. Like, I have a Razer keyboard as we speak. It's just bad tech products that ruin companies. If you're not honest with the products you release, then that's kind of your fault. This could just be me being very biased here because I honestly like Marcus Brownie. If you could, drop your opinions in the comments, honestly. I, I want to I wanna hear you guys' opinion on this. And I will respond to those as fast as possible. But overall, what do you guys think about this? Uh, I'm going to go now, so see y'all. BOOM!